Hey everyone, my name is Jim Butler and welcome to a bonus episode of the Deep Energy Podcast. Today, I'm happy to announce a collaboration with the fine people over at the Get Sleepy Podcast. The Get Sleepy Podcast is a podcast of relaxing music and a bedtime story. How awesome is that? So the music for this episode is mine and the story is titled Ready for Winter. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. His voice, the gentleman that reads the story his voice is so relaxing it'll it'll just put you right out it's wonderful you can find out more about their podcast and their app by going to getsleepy.com so thank you to the getsleepy.com people and maybe we'll do some more of these you can find out more about me and my music by going to jimbutlermusic.com and if you'd like to hear my music without any ads without any speaking you can head on over to my patreon page which is patreon.com slash deep energy podcast and there you go. So enjoy the rest of your Sunday if you are listening on the day that I'm releasing this, which is Sunday. Um, and thank you very much. Bye. Welcome to Get Sleepy, the podcast where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. Now, in tonight's story, We'll learn about a number of wonderful animals as they prepare ahead of the impending British winter. We'll visit them as they search for food supplies and build their nests and get ready to settle in for a restful few months. But before we get there, let's take some time as always to relax. Now as you lay in bed right now, whatever you're doing, whatever you're feeling, it's all part of that process of falling asleep. You've got to let your body unwind and give yourself time. Just as our bodies go through a process to adjust for winter, so too do our bodies go through that process of falling asleep. Part of that process tonight will be listening to my voice. Another part will be getting comfortable and feeling your body warm the bed and feeling your muscles relax. And another part will be your breathing. Just turning your attention to your breath for a couple of minutes. Just slowing it down, getting a full deep breath in. And slowly releasing the air back out. And breathing in again. and back out. And just try and maintain that slower, fuller breathing pattern just for a little while whilst your body relaxes and eases into bed. And there may be other parts of the process of falling asleep for you and I don't know what the final straw will be that puts you to sleep. But just know that you're on your way there. And while you're on your way to sleep, allow your mind to drift to a meadow in the British countryside. It's dawn and a cool, crisp breeze rustles across the land. And this is where our story begins. As the sun rises on the sleepy British countryside, 
A light dusting of frost covers the expansive green fields. Though the sun will have the frost cleared up in no time, it acts as a fair warning to the animals of this land that winter is on its way. With fewer daylight hours, wildlife have to maximise their time during the darker months. They must ensure that they stay well fed and prepared for extreme weather conditions. For many animals, this is quite literally the sleepy season. Much like we, as humans, like to wrap up warm and spend cosy nights in, recharging our bodies during the winter, so too do a number of species in the wild. For them, long periods of rest and sleep is part of their natural life cycle, and it's called hibernation. And as you listen to this story, why not envisage yourself as a gentle, hibernating creature, snug and safe in your comfy bed? The grey squirrel is highly abundant in Britain. In many rural areas, as well as forests and national parks. Their long furry tails make them easy to spot. They're usually ascending tree trunks, skipping over garden fences, or digging up turf to bury their nuts. A squirrel nest is officially called a dray And though they do not hibernate here in the UK, they like to make their drays warm and cosy for the winter. Now on a chilly October morning, we join an adult squirrel who lives in the forest of Dean in Gloucestershire. Skipping through the woodland, the soft, earthy ground kicks up beneath the squirrel's hind legs. She likes to move quickly to avoid any predators from noticing her. After a night's rest, she is feeling peckish. Luckily, she remembers several precise locations in which her nuts are buried just below the surface, ready to eat. Peanuts are a personal favourite of this little squirrel. They make for an energising and nutritious start to the day. She finds one of her ready prepared meals under the leaf covered surface gripping it tightly between her front paws, she chomps away at the delicious peanut. Her long, sharp front teeth are excellent at breaking down firm foods like these. With the light frost beneath her paws, she then decides that she ought to begin adding more layers to her existing dray. The foundations were built in the summer to inhabit her newborn offspring. Now, however, she needs to reinforce the twigs, leaves and tufts of dry grass that are currently in place. Making her way around the forest, The squirrel has no issue finding enough suitable leaves. The autumn season has naturally brought a heavy scattering of them. Yellow and reddish colours 
from the tall, majestic trees above. They will be perfect for providing shelter from the wind, rain and possibly snow in the coming months. This squirrel's dray lies in the forks of a tall beech tree. These trees are very common in the forest of Dean. With a strong foundation and broad branches, they provide good stability and protection for the squirrels. Gently clinching the leaves between her teeth, the squirrel makes several trips up and down the tree. Her young are still with her, and they are old enough now to help her assemble the items into an orderly form. Over the coming weeks, the nest grows larger and thicker. Now there is no fear for the cold weather, as these squirrels are well prepared with food supplies and a cosy, soft habitat. As well as the squirrel, there are plenty more British animals readying for the winter. Badgers are collecting food supplies and ensuring that their sets are as warm and comfortable as possible. Frogs and toads are familiarising themselves with the best rocks and logs to shelter beneath. Dormice and hedgehogs are eating all that they can to ensure they have good levels of fat reserves to get them through hibernation. We'll visit some of these wonderful creatures later in the story. For now, it's time to learn about a flying mammal for whom winter demands great preparation Bats. Taking flight only once the sun has set, it is an exciting moment to spot a bat circling around through the air. They usually fly just above head level, using their incredible sense of hearing to navigate around obstacles and to find food. Being completely blind, darkness makes no difference to their ability to fly, but it does help to protect them from potential dangers. In the forest of Dean, there are a few different species of bats to be found. Most common of all is the brown, long-eared bat. These fluffy, unique little creatures have ears measuring roughly 25 to 30 millimeters in length. This helps them to hear even the tiniest of insects that they can catch and eat whilst flying. As the sun sets, one particular bat is hovering nearby the canop ponds in the forest. Here, there are plenty of insects flying about, attracted by the water. Like most hibernating or torporing animals, he is trying to consume as much food as possible before the winter season arrives in full force. This bat roosts in a large, heavy log. It lies beneath the outstretched branches of the tall trees above. 
there's a small alcove in the log that is perfectly sized to inhabit and protect him from the outside world. He discovered the log a couple of months ago and has been spending his days in there ever since. Over the last week, the bat has noticed that he's feeling a bit colder, especially when frost forms on the log overnight. Though he doesn't require a habitat that is as warm as those belonging to most mammals, this log is just a bit too cold to remain in for hibernation. He'll need to relocate to somewhere that offers more stable temperatures for the winter. This can be as simple as a crevice in a tree which holds its heat better than a lonesome log. However, last year, this bat roosted in the roof of a modern building in the forest. The building is used as a tourist visitor center, so it tends to stay quite warm throughout the winter. the bat decides to make for the same building once again. And when he arrives, there are already four or five other bats roosting here. Some of them he remembers from before, and they welcome him to join them again. As the air turns colder, the bats form a tight-knit huddle in the roof. Soon they will slow their heart rates and allow their body temperatures to drop significantly as they torpor through the winter months. This means that, though the bats will not strictly remain in hibernation, they will dramatically reduce their mental and physical activity. It's just a natural part of their life to spend a period in total rest mode. And how rejuvenating it must be to completely let go of your thinking and allow your body and mind to fully recharge. Perhaps Britain's most infamous hibernator of them all is the hedgehog. These shy and timid little mammals are mostly found in bushy hedgerows and other well-hidden places. They often make use of man-made constructions, such as compost heaps or stacks of logs as bases for their livelihood. They are also commonly seen in gardens, where they make use of sheds, shrubbery and more to house them through the winter. In the peaceful suburbs of Cambridgeshire, a three-year-old adult hedgehog is looking for an idyllic spot to stay for the duration of the winter. He's spent most of the year by the local playing fields. Here, there has been an abundance of food, meaning he's filled out nicely on fatty reserves and is in good health ahead of the snowy season. As the trees and bushes start to shed their leaves, the hedgehog realises it's getting towards the time that he needs a warm and stable habitat. He therefore spends the next couple of days exploring the gardens of several nearby streets. He surveys a number of sheds, ornamental statues and structures, but none are quite right. 
he needs his nest to be warm, hidden and safe from foxes and cats. But so far, nothing has quite ticked all of those boxes. The hedgehog continues to house hunt throughout the autumnal evenings. Staying filled up on earthworms, caterpillars and other food sources along route. Just when he's feeling completely disheartened, he crawls into an expansive and flourishing back garden. The property is a large four bedroom cottage. The hedgehog can tell that the owners take good care of their garden. The grass is a luscious green colour and there is a water feature trickling beside a two-seater bench. And then he spots the most exciting part of it all. At the foot of the long narrow garden sits a hexagonal shaped summer house. It's a solid wooden structure with large windows exhibiting some cosy looking armchairs and a well stocked bookcase inside. Being that the weather was cold and sunshine was at a premium by now, the hedgehog hoped that he may go unnoticed should he choose to settle in here. The owners are likely to have stopped using the summer house back in September time. The hedgehog eagerly strolls up to take a closer look. The summer house backs onto a strong and tall wooden fence, which at the rear is no more than seven or eight inches from its base. It's an ideal size for the hedgehog to be able to keep safe and unnoticed from predators. The ground is soft and there are already some fallen leaves behind the structure. The spike-backed creature can use these to begin building his nest. After organising the leaves into a cushiony pile, the hedgehog trots back out into the garden to find more reinforcements. He begins by taking up a few small clumps of grass, lovely and soft to lay on. He then grabs some twigs and even a selection of pebbles to help hold the nest together. All the while, the little hedgehog has been found out by the humans that live at this address. Two young children, a girl and a boy, have spotted the hedgehog scuffling back and forth through their garden. Coming out to take a closer look, the children quietly watch from the edge of the lawn. Just as the hedgehog is making his final run for the last of his supplies, he notices the humans watching him. Not knowing that they only have fond intentions, the hedgehog panics and retreats to the back of the summer house as fast as he can. His heart is racing and he feels a little breathless. He'd hoped that he will remain undetected throughout the winter. But now, he's got a real predicament. 
should he up and leave and find another garden, or stay and hope that the humans don't mind. This summer house is so perfect, the hedgehog can't imagine that he'll find a better habitat, even if he searched for weeks on end, and there's no time for that. As the sun is already setting, the hedgehog decides to stay for the night and reassess in the morning. Despite the comfort of his newly built habitat, he endures a restless night. He can't help but worry that the humans will force him to leave and go elsewhere. If only I could speak to them, then they'd know I won't be a pest, thought the hedgehog. Come the next morning, the weary hedgehog awakens to the sound of footsteps. Brushing over the soft grass, he can tell that they are the feet of a human. Afraid that they are trying to find him, he stays as still and as silent as he can. Eventually, the garden quietens again. The hedgehog cautiously pops his head out from behind the summer house. The garden is empty. Phew. However, just a metre or so in front of the summer house, there appears to be a small dish. That wasn't there yesterday evening. What could it be? He thought to himself. With heightened vigilance, the small creature approaches the white china dish. To his surprise, it's filled with a selection of chopped nuts, meaty pet biscuits, and pieces of apple. The hedgehog stands by the dish and looks up to the house. In the back window, he sees the children smiling and waving. It turns out the humans are more than happy to have him. And what's more, they clearly wish to help him through the winter with food supplies. The hedgehog can't believe his luck. The perfect habitat, and now the perfect hosts to go with it. He chomps away at the mini buffet, helping to boost his fatty reserves once again. As the weeks go by, the human family continue to support their new guest. Food, grass and other materials are all offered, helping him to be as prepared as possible for hibernation. Come November, the weather is consistently cold and wintry. By now, the hedgehog has achieved his optimum weight and his nest is suitably warm, pallid and cosy. The humans once again leave a plate of food out for him. So as to not seem rude, the hedgehog pops out once more to feed for the final time. He leaves a few pieces untouched, and this way the humans will hopefully realise that they no longer need to supply the food each morning.
with this, the spiky but cute little creature makes his way back home, behind the summer house. He gets himself nice and comfortable, ensuring he's well covered and protected. It's time for him to enjoy a restful hibernation. Lowering his heart rate and his body temperature, he slowly drifts into an extra deep sleep. Apart from the occasional toilet trip and small snacks from his preserved supplies, the hedgehog will be settled in here for two to three months. By the time the snow arrives, all of the lovely, intelligent animals that we've learned about tonight are ready for winter.